paper Vietnam have been definitely definitely silent if not neutral for the matter what novel strategies can the ASEAN adopt in order to prevent further Chinese aggression in the South China Sea what was the intention of raising maritime tensions at the ASEAN China summit when countries usually take it up in other uh, forums like the EAS or the NDA ARS well we take we take every every opportunity that we can uh, again to make the uh, the Philippine position clear um, our 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 intent really is that at this point, what we are doing is trying to manage the situation. Uh, I, you know that you, there's uh, all of us who have been been working on this problem for a while. Don't I have come to the conclusion this, there's no silver bullet here that will solve the problems immediately. So we have to just manage it so that there's no conflict that we do not, it does not erupt into. Uh, a, a hotter uh, confrontation than it already is. So uh, that that what we what we in the in the Philippines' approach to maintaining and to protecting our sovereignty is to keep a presence. Masat meron tayong barko don, meron tayong nangingisda, meron tayong presence don sa bawat lugar. Ngayon, kung meron mga mga na uh, 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 in intimidate yung ating mga fishermen o kinaharang yung ating mga barko, yung mga coast guard. Eh, we will just have to, we will just have to deal with it. But uh, nonetheless, whatever happens, we will maintain that presence uh, so because it is important uh, to show uh, the world and and our people that um, we are in the business of protecting our sovereignty. We are in the business of maintaining our, uh, of, of protecting our ter territorial imperatives. We are uh, insisting on exercising our sovereign rights. Sir, it was the Philippines that first proposed the creation of a code of conduct in the South yeah. China Sea. When we couldn't get that, the Philippines pushed for the adoption of a declaration of conduct in 2002. And, you know, we're hosting the ASEAN in 2026. Will we push for the conclusion of the COC? <laughs> Every single day we push for the conclusion of COC. Um, because then that will provide the basis that will, I'm sure that will come when the time, when, when if and when we um, have that COC, uh, then it will, it will lay down the rules for everyone to follow. And it will stabilize the situation. That's why it is so important. That's why um, I, uh, I don't want to, to make it uh, uh, a, a small matter uh, that we push, we really push. In fact, in, in almost every one of my interventions uh, here at this uh, ASEAN summit, we mention that and say that the solution for now to this is, well, no, not for now. The solution in the, in the end will be to have a COC. And we are always pushing for it. We're always pushing for it. We have to accelerate the negotiations we have to define our terms already as quickly as possible so we can talk about the issues that's a very important part of our of our argument sure, last question, sir. so with that in mind how do you think the ASEAN should accelerate those talks you've uh, pushed it in your interventions how do you think the other ASEAN member countries would accelerate it? i think the onus is now on china to uh to accelerate those talks asean has been has been waiting uh, for a long time 